All right, time now to take a very short break, but on our radar, on the other side, a rocket made of not space age materials, but cardboard. Welcome back to Ideas to Life, where ignited minds meet and plenty of ideas are always available for takeoff. Now, the Americans had the moon landing as a seminal moment in their space age, and we here in India had the launch of our very own satellites, the GSLVs and the PSLVs, to define our space age. But here's the story of a rocket with nothing official about it. A cardboard can be a spine to your thoughts. It can be a canvas for your ideas and guess what? It can even be a launch pad for your very own space program. That's right. And to prove our point, we bring you the story of Abhishek Majit here. Now, Abhishek's journey into the world of rockets began by well, not joining any space agency. How could he? After all, he's just a fourth year engineering student from the Rai Foundation College located in Belapur. No. Abhishek's passion began with a rocket which he built using an 8 feet long cardboard sheet and endless reels of blue nylon ribbon. Flight for me has always been a, a, a dream, you know. Like Leonardo da Vinci said it, once you look up there you'll never want to come down because that's where your heart will be there. Now boys of Abhishek's age think about either the IITs or girls. But not this lad. For him, it was the rocket. Day in and day out. The first thing is like I got a printout of a rocket design which is similar to one you're seeing behind and this was what I stuck onto a wall and I was like I have to make this. So uh, that's where you know it gave me an impetus then I started going on to the internet. So uh, basically uh, I can classify my project as gather information now validate that information according to India then I have to go down to the market and look at can I get something similar to this in India. So a lot of, you know, uh, it's a big vicious circle which you get sucked into and it, it's very difficult to source parts in India which would confirm to what they are writing about as such. So that's then. Then uh, a lot of time was spent in actually gathering the materials before construction. Now uh, I did a feasibility, you can say semi-feasibility study here where I went down to the market, I had a huge list of things what I'm supposed to buy or get. And I started ticking them off and started writing the names of the shops or the addresses of the places where I could get them. So once I had this whole list down with a general pricing as to where I'll stand, that is when I went into the purchase mode. It was a risky proposition, but Abhishek didn't care. He knew his good mind would see him through all obstacles. Finally, in 2007, he cut the first part of what might soon become India's first amateur solid propellant fuel rocket, made out of nothing but cardboard, reinforced by nylon and epoxy binder. Now you see this rocket is pretty huge, which I made, and it's roughly around 9 feet long, so you can see all of this. Now it is made up of uh, various parts or components, and this is the, it basically the rocket body is the main uh, section of this now this is of two parts each section is of four feet in length four feet and four feet and they're, they're held in place by a coupler you can see the various screws here you can see the various screws now the coupler is inside this and it's holding these two together we have the fins out here they're made up of plywood and have got them with a good finish, a very smooth finish to keep the aerodynamics in mind and to keep the drag low. If you see it's, it's got a very smooth finish and also the edges have been tapered if you can see this and of course it's held in place by aluminium angles so if you see it's pretty strong. Now this is a major uh, bulkhead out here which is going to transfer the weight or the thrust of the rocket motor to the rocket body. So the rocket motor is going to push this rocket and this is the one which is going to transfer all that force to the rocket body. Finance was never a problem, neither was advice. 
But even then the ride began to seem more and more like an Apollo 13 mission. It's pretty frustrating at times, you know, to actually sit up and you're starting and doing these things and then you come across, you know, that, okay, I made something, but then you don't find the right material or the size of the pipe for that in the market. Now that's again a big uh, thing because you, you just finished these equations, you're so happy and excited that, okay, I finished up with the whole design and you go down to the market and you don't get those pipes. Or, or even if you get the same size of a pipe, it's, it's not something that would really hold the rocket motor strength. It's not, it's not got the strength inside, you know, that would, it would bear the strength of the propulsion inside. The, so it's, it's a lot of uh, up and down process, up and down. So that, that's really tiring basically, traveling uh, here and to and fro, to and fro again. Two long years and 20,000 rupees later, the big question still remains. Will Vishmakarma take off? There's nothing holding it back theoretically. After all, the rocket in its simplest form is a chamber that holds gas under pressure. The small opening at one end of the chamber allows gas to escape, giving the rocket the required thrust to fly. But there is still a critical ingredient missing. Two and a half kilos of composite propellant. Now, if Abhishek does manage to procure it from the local agency, the fuel could enable the rocket to reach 15,000 feet in just 30 seconds. Yes, that's right, 30 seconds. Of course, there's also the tiny matter of the rocket being able to withstand 4,500 degrees centigrade of exhaust temperature at the time of ignition and velocities in the range of 800 to 1,000 meters per second. But that's not exactly the biggest problem, according to Abhishek. There are bigger variables which are completely out of his control. In India, I would, I would approach the aviation authority, the civil aviation authority to give me permission or maybe if they could give me an area for 5 minutes or 10 minutes, even if it's on the outskirts of city, to uh, give me a permission to launch this. Only 10 minutes window, that's it. So that's one. And two, I would have to uh, approach ISRO because I would like the uh, scientists from there to uh, look after, look into the rocket's various principles, you know, the aerodynamics to the rocket. I want to uh, talk to people from ATMRL, High Energy Materials Research Lab. Okay, okay. Now they're based in Pune, and uh, they are the ones who are actually uh, formulating propellants for various of our uh, space devices. So if, if they could actually look into it, it'll be one more great thing. Once all systems are go. Abhishek plans to take his rocket to the next frontier by test firing it with a liquid propelled rocket engine. He also dreams of starting India's first amateur rocketry club. So while Abhishek sets about tweaking his rocket in preparation for a launch early next year, we hope Vishwakarma gets to rendezvous with its bigger and much more advanced cousin Isro's Chandrayaan somewhere in space. Time for a short break, but coming up, an iRobot with a nose for bombs.